Expectancy theory is a process theory that states that motivation is determined by the outcomes that people expect to occur as a result of their actions on the job. Expectancy is shaped by self-efficacy, sometimes called the E to P or expectancy to performance, the belief that a person has the capabilities needed to execute the behaviors required for task success. Self-efficacy depends on an analysis of the task and one's own resources. For example, think of an athlete. What sort of things would coaches say during practices, before games, and or during games? Imagine the motivational speeches describing past accomplishments, the use of verbal persuasion, or emotional cues. Here, coaches are increasing the athlete's self-efficacy, their belief that they can perform the task. The basic components of Victor Vroom's expectancy theory are outcomes, instrumentality, balance, expectancy, and force. We will describe and examine each of these components using an example. In the example before you, we see the expectancy model for Tony Angelus. First, we have outcomes. Outcomes are the consequences that follow certain work behaviors. First level outcomes are of particular interest to the organization. For example, high performance versus average performance. Second level outcomes are consequences that follow the attainment of a particular first level outcome and are more personally relevant to an individual worker. For example, pay raise or promotion. Second, expectancy is the belief that exerting a high level of effort will result in the successful performance of a task. That is, the probability that a particular first level outcome can be achieved. Third, instrumentality is the belief that successful performance will result in certain outcomes. That is, the probability that a particular first level outcome will be followed by a particular second level outcome. Four, balance is the anticipated value of the outcomes associated with performance. That is, the extent to which these outcomes are attractive or unattractive to an individual. Finally, force represents the relative degree of effort that will be directed towards various first level outcomes. We will calculate this soon. Using this model, at what level of performance will Tony perform? We need to calculate his force. Therefore, the first thing we need to know is the balance Tony attaches to first level outcomes. How do we calculate this? The valence of high performance is 5 multiplied by 0.6 plus 7 multiplied by 0.3. This gives us 5.1. The valence of average performance is 5 multiplied by 0.2 plus 7 multiplied by 0.1. Here we get a score of 1.7. Therefore, Tony finds high performance more attractive. 5.1 is of course much greater than 1.7. Does this mean that Tony will try to perform at a high level? Not quite. We need to take into account Tony's expectancy. The force associated with high performance is 0.3 multiplied by 5.1. That gives us 1.53. The force associated with average performance is 1 multiplied by 1.7, which gives us 1.70. Therefore, we see that 1.70 is greater than 1.53, and although high performance is more attractive to Tony, he will probably perform at an average level. You may be thinking, well Paul, this theory isn't realistic. Individuals don't go about their daily lives calculating these formulae. You are partially right. Individuals instead implicitly take into account the expectancy components when determining their course of action, that is, where to direct effort. So, how can managers use expectancy theory to improve motivation? Managers can use this theory in three main ways. First, increase expectancy, also known as the expectancy to performance or E to P, via matching individuals to job requirements training, coaching, role clarity, or providing sufficient resources. Second, increase instrumentalities, also known as the performance to outcomes or P to O. By measuring performance accurately, explaining how rewards are linked to performance, individuals may experience increased instrumentalities. 
Third, increase outcome balances by ensuring that rewards are valued. We only used two in our example, and Tony may value other rewards besides pay and promotion. To further expand our point here, consider the following table. Employees attach importance to a host of other outcomes. Managers should therefore ensure that they use rewards that are consistent with individuals' values. This may mean individualizing rewards. On your own or in groups, now reconsider the case of Tony Angelus and attempt the question posted.